The kids who don't eat their vegetables, right? vegetables and that's not a good thing so I was gonna wake up and eat some like bacon and eggs or something like that but not today today I think I'm gonna eat my vegetables I might have been scared straight but vegetables can be kind of boring so I don't want to do any of that so instead what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a bunch of techniques I've learned along the line to make the vegetables a little more interesting so I'm gonna share that with you today so uh, stick around and uh, we're gonna have some fun so what I'm going to do to start this dish is I want to make a dashi. A dashi is sort of like an enhanced broth or an enriched liquid in which you can start sort of building your flavors off of. Um, this one I'm going to do with dried shiitake mushrooms in keeping in the vein of this being a vegetarian meal. These little guys, if handled correctly, are an umami bomb. So I'm really excited about this. These are beautiful. You can pick these guys up on the internet, or you can pick them up in any sort of Asian grocery market. Uh, get the dried ones. This is going to be awesome. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to kind of steep these dried mushrooms in water and make almost a broth, which is called a dachi. So now, I mean, look at these beauties. We want to keep them whole because we're going to use these guys later because after they're hydrated, they're also delicious and edible. So we're going to get a couple of these guys in here. Look at these beauties. Oh, so beautiful. So freaking beautiful. We're going to start off with some hot water just so we can speed this process up because this takes a little bit of time. We're just going to bring these guys up to a boil and then bring it down to simmer. It should take about an hour, maybe an hour and a half. You could get let these go for up to like three hours to get a little more intensive flavor. Um, so yeah, you can, you can let these go for, for quite some time. They're very resilient and they will definitely stand up to the heat. They're not going to fall apart on you. They're going to be really beautiful. So let's do that. So the mushrooms have been going about a half an hour at this point. So I want to start making the other component of this dashi. What we're going to use is this stuff. This is called kombu. It's actually, what it is, is it's a dried sea kelp. Okay, and it's actually very delicious. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna steep this too. Now it's important not to bring this up to a boil. Before this gets to a boil, we wanna stop this. Otherwise, the liquid will get very slimy. We're just gonna put this in the water. Start the heat. Now, if you get to the point where this is starting to come down a little too low, you can always add a little more water. That's not going to be a problem at all. And you can see this has started to wilt in the pan and we're starting to get a little coloration in the liquid. This is just what we want. We're also starting to see a little bit of bubbles form around the side. That means it's almost to where we want it. As soon as we start to see one or two bubbles start rising to the surface, a little bit of steam on top, we're going to be good to go. We're going to pull this and we're going to strain this out. Now this is right where we want it at this point. So we, we've cut the heat on this and we're just going to pull this out. Now we don't want to throw this out because this still has a use, which you'll see later. Now 
It's very fragrant of the sea. It's really quite lovely. As you can see, we have a nice golden color now. So this is about where we want to be. If you can see, we've developed nice color in this broth. Oh, oh, it's so good. Oh, oh, it's just so rich and earthy and deep. Remember, you always want to try your food. So we're ready to turn this off. We're at this point now, we can take out these mushrooms. But remember, we're gonna reserve these because we're gonna use these guys later. So now we have this beautiful shiitake mushroom stock and this beautiful kombu broth. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add them together. And this is our dashi. This is gonna be our cooking liquid that we're gonna use throughout the rest of this dish. So anytime we need moisture added, we're gonna add that. I'm just gonna boost the flavor that much more. So I wanna to start to think about how we're gonna construct our dish. What makes up a good dish? Well, we gotta think of texture. We want it to be soft and succulent, velvety, with some crunch, some bite, some chew to it. We want it to be slightly indulgent, slightly rich. We want to think about the flavor contrast. So we want it to be a little bit sweet. We want it to be salty. We want it to have umami. We want it to be a little bit bright with acid. We want it to have a little bit of the, the chlorophyll of some sort of leafy thing or green vegetable of some sort. So we want to think about this when we're composing. We definitely want crunch. We definitely want unctuousness. We want we want things that are going to surprise us at every single bite. So we got to think about that now as we're coming up with what we're going to do for our dish. So right now we have our dashi. So let's start there. Our dashi is very earthy and meaty almost, very oceanic from the kelp um, without being seafood smelling or like rotten fish, but bright like the ocean, like when you go swimming at the beach. So we have those two components thus far as our stepping stone to our next level. So let's think about what we're gonna do next. So it ended up that in my fridge, I happened to have pre-sliced up some lotus root that I was snacking on, because these are delicious. Those are very nutritious for you. They have a kind of crunchy, sort of chestnutty, sort of alkaline thing going on. What I wanna do to these to make them a little more interesting is I wanna add the depth of flavor that comes only from caramelization. So I've thought about frying this, but since we're dealing with vegetables and stuff, I want to try and keep the frying to a minimum. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to dry these in, I have an air fryer. Now you could do this if you had a convection oven, or you could do this in your oven yourself just at a low heat for a long period of time, uh, several hours. You want to keep an eye on these guys. Anyway, I'm going to do that now, because I think not only are they delicious, they're really fucking cool looking. So these are the guys I put in my air fryer. Now, while the lotus is getting crispy in my air fryer, what I had previously done is I have dried slices of tomato. First of all, tomato, the more you cook it down, the more umami it adds to any dish. So I really want to add a lot of umami to this because it's something that your body really craves. So now, what I've done is I've put these in a dehydrator overnight and I got them to be uh, just dried out, very intense in flavor. Now, if you don't have a food dehydrator, which I understand, you could put these in your oven at the lowest heat possible overnight. If you feel weird about that, put them in the morning on a weekend, check them every couple of hours until you get this consistency. Put them out on a little bit of uh, parchment paper and put them in the oven on a sheet pan. Also going through my fridge, I found these little cucumbers that are, yeah, they probably have like a few more days left, but I wanna use them up before they go bad. I hate wasting anything. So these guys are gonna have to come into play. These guys are gonna add that sort of bright, refreshing, chlorophyll flavor to my dish. So I'm gonna do something cool with these. So these guys are done. Look how crispy they've gotten. How fucking awesome is that? Mmm. Their flavor is very reminiscent of like, rye bread crust, if that makes any sense to you. It's really, really, really pleasant flavor. Anyway, let's put these aside for later. So what I did with some of those cucumbers is I took them, cut them up into big chunks with a little bit of fresh mint and a little bit of lemon juice, a little pinch of salt, 
and I put them in a food processor. Then I took that pulp and I strained it through cheesecloth and I ended up with this. This is cucumber water and it's delicious. It's very chlorophyll, I guess is the best way to put that. It's very bright. Definitely a contrast to the mushroom dashi that we're working with here. So this is a great thing. We're gonna be using this a little later. What we're doing right now is we're creating elements. We want these elements in our dish. So essentially we're just create we're just we're taking these ingredients, changing them a little bit into something a little more interesting. And then we're gonna have these great ingredients to compile together and use our imaginations to create a great dish. So this guy, I'm gonna peel him. We don't need that piece. As you can see, he's extraordinarily ripe. Okay, so now that's done, we're just gonna put that aside in the fridge to let that stay cool and crisp and keep its beautiful fresh quality. So now one of the things I found going through my pantry was these crazy things, which are a Peruvian corn that's been fried. It's kind of like a corn nut, if you've ever had one of those. They're delicious. They're lightly salted, lightly fried, and they sort of taste like tortilla. So I'm gonna use these as part of my dish and I'm gonna counteract them with a little bit of corn nibs, which right now are frozen. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna treat them in a pan with this. What it is, is it's miso paste and butter that has come to room temperature. It was then whipped together and then repackaged. It's just a compound butter made with butter and miso paste. That's all it is. But we're gonna use it to fry our corn. So let's get this guy going. It's got a really nice funk that I'm really into. We only need a little bit, because we want to do we do want to make this healthy. So just let this come down a little bit. The fragrance coming off this is sick. So boom. We're just gonna hit it in here. No salt. It doesn't need salt. The miso itself has enough salt in it. Just turn the heat down a little bit. We're gonna add a little bit of our dashi. Just to add a little kick cooking li liquid to help it along. Now we can crank the heat on that. Remember, we always wanna scrape down, scrape down. This is all flavor. All the stuff that accumulates on the sides of the pan is all just caramelized flavor. Oh, the smell is intoxicating. Just that little bit of black pepper in there, just to kind of give it a little bit of a punch. I'm not looking for spicy, sort of like a, a back in your throat kind of spicy that you get from the black pepper, a little bit smoky. I think that's gonna add nicely to the sweet corn that's kind of funky from this miso. See, we wanna cook out most of this liquid here. We can turn this down, let the residual heat just finish it off. So almost what we've done is done a glazed corn in miso. It's like, a, it's essentially a miso glazed corn. I just wanna try this, see if it's where I'm at. Mmm. <laughs> oh my. Wow. That is awesome. It's sweet. It's sort of funky from the miso. It's just loaded with umami. It's really kind of luxurious from the butter. This is just delicious. Always use something. So this is this is good. We're gonna just put this to the side. This is another one of our elements for our dish. So the next thing I want to deal with is this absolutely gorgeous oyster mushroom. I mean, look at this. How can I not want to cook this? So I'm just gonna do a couple of different preparations to this, just to make it a little more interesting. First thing I'm gonna do 
is I'm gonna sear it in butter. So we wanna get our pan going, get a little butter going. I wanna cut a couple of these big, beautiful lobes off. These big, beautiful mushrooms. Look at these. Just lovely. Okay, we're gonna put the rest of this aside for now. So we wanna wait until the foam subsides a little bit. All right, that's what we're looking for. I'm just gonna lay these in the pan. Hit them with a little bit of salt. Just a little bit. A little bit of fresh pepper. As you can see, I'm not doing anything to them right now. I'm just letting them sit there. I want them to get a nice caramelization on the bottom. Well, actually on the top of the mushroom. We can turn the heat down a little bit because we don't want to burn this butter. gonna dust it with a little bit of sweet paprika. Just a little dust. That's it. Not too much. The smell coming off of here is almost like bacon. I swear to God. By the time I'm done with this, any diehard carnivore you know would be very happy for this. Look at that beautiful color. That's what we're looking for. Now, so it's getting just a little bit too hot for me, so I'm gonna add a little bit of this dashi. That's gonna do a great job of steaming that flavor, removing some of those caramelized bits on the bottom. The smell coming off of this is just a hard Just a little bit of lemon. Just to brighten it up a little bit. Just a little bit of lemon. Okay, that looks to be just where I want it. So we're just gonna turn this off. We'll just put these aside. Now the next treatment we're gonna do to these mushrooms is we're gonna grill some. Now, I have an outdoor grill, but I wanna get an indoor grill where I'm really close to the flame. So I've taken this straining basket and I'm putting it right on top of the flame. I know this is a little insane. Now while that's heating up, I'm just gonna trim a little more of these mushrooms off. Just a couple, because we already have mushrooms we're dealing with different types of mushrooms, actually, so we just want a little bit. This is, we're not making too much here. So we're just gonna sprinkle it with a little salt. Now we're just gonna lay them down and get a nice char. Just cooking these guys right over the open flame. We want that that char, that that smoke, that that flame kissed flavor on these. Now this may take a little while. Remember, cooking is therapeutic. You're doing this to relax, and you get to enjoy a delicious meal afterwards. So we got a nice char on these guys. Just gonna cook them a couple of seconds longer just to finish off that char.
And that's what we're going for. So these guys are done. We're going to put these guys aside. So now we're going to worry, well at least we're going to start to worry, about these beautiful shiitakes. So remember that kelp, that kombu? That's this. So this is going right back on the grill. Because some of these we're going to grill on top of the kombu. So we want this to get hot. gonna hit these guys with a little bit of pink Himalayan salt. Just a little bit. Now you don't have to worry about this catching fire because it's been completely saturated with water. I just want it to be kissed with that flavor of the kelp. That's gonna be good. It's okay if we have a little of the ash on there. We kind of want that. Lend a beautiful flavor. Now you can reserve this and use it for other things. You can wrap fish in this. It's 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 really delicious and it's unbelievably nutritious. So now we're gonna start worrying about these last bit of mushrooms here. These are gonna be more of the focal point of our dish. So I'm gonna cook these very slowly in sesame oil and soy sauce. Very, very slowly. Want to get heat up there before we add our soy sauce. So now one thing I want to introduce into this is, as this is part of the main portion of our dish, I also have this beautiful duck egg that was gifted to me. And I just have to use it because it's beautiful. Now you can do this with any type of egg. I just happen to have a duck egg. Um, I feel like it would be really lovely to have a nice soft yolk as a, almost like a sauce to uh, sort of enrich everything that we're doing here and make it make it very luxurious so I'm gonna be using one of these I'm thinking I might do a crispy duck egg I think that's nice a crispy duck egg with a soft yolk I feel like that's the way to do this these guys could use a little more dashi <laughs> Now over here, same thing. I want this foam to subside before I put the egg in. I'm just gonna hit this with a little bit of salt. Now a duck egg is much bigger than a regular egg. So it's gonna take a little longer to cook. We wanna help it along by cook, helping cook that top. So we're just going to baste the egg in this beautiful butter. Unsalted of course, we always use unsalted butter. Going to baste the egg. The one thing we don't want is we don't want a runny white, but we want a runny yolk. We're just going to lightly baste this stuff guy in hot butter. guy's done. Because of his thickness, he can hang out here for a couple of minutes without worry of overcooking that yolk. If this were an egg, a regular sized chicken egg, I would say to pull this immediately. 
going to hit these guys with a little bit more soy sauce. One more time with the basket. Now, as you can see, I've put the egg to rest on the side because I want to drain some of the fat away. And I also want to stop the cooking process. And as you can see, that egg yolk is just quivering. It is gorgeous. Now, we don't want to be too violent. We want to respect the mushroom. But we definitely want to cook this liquid down a little bit. Same thing. We want to glaze these mushrooms with that liquid. As you can see, I've cooked a lot of this liquid down. That's what I want. I want these to be really meaty. That's what I'm looking for. That's what I'm looking for. Some nice color. That guy could go a little bit longer. Beautiful. That's what we're looking for. See that beautiful color? That beautiful color? That's what we want. Okay, this guy's done. We can turn him off and take him off the heat.
right, so this is our crazy vegetarian, like, <laughs> freestyle. Um, first thing I gotta do is I gotta break the yolk. Ugh. I mean, come on, get a look at this. Now, you may be asking, what are these? I added blueberries to this because I wanted a little bit of tartness. Look at that, just beautiful. Oh, is that just sick or what? I'm gonna get a little everything in a bite, you know what I mean? There's a lot going on. The mushroom itself is like meaty, almost like uh, like beef, um, and it's really enhanced by the char on that grilled oyster mushroom we did. Mm. If you fed this to somebody and didn't tell them there was no meat in it, they would never know. Mmm. Mmm. It's like this roller coaster. You get hit with this crunch and this velvety egg yolk, and then you get hit with the brightness of the cucumber and the tartness of the berry. You get that that crazy glazed corn with the funky miso butter and that tortilla crunch of these um, giant Peruvian fried corn, and plus the uh, these little lotus uh, root crests, which are almost, they taste very much almost like a rye bread, which is very, very, very strange, but that lingering aftertaste of lotus root, which is very alkaline. And then the crispy white of the duck yolk, I mean, of the, of the duck white. I mean, this is just, this is pretty insane. <laughs> Give this to somebody who has a hangover. Guaranteed, it's gone. Just gotta have one more bite of this. Mm. <laughs> I gotta tell you, I had no idea what I was gonna cook today, but I knew I needed to do something with vegetables because uh, I've done meat twice now, beef once, bacon once. It's time to hit my vegetarian friends up with uh, something that they could do at home. This is relatively easy. It's just a bunch of techniques added to each individual uh, vegetable independently to give it this whole overall vibe. We based everything off that dashi we made first. That was our stepping stone that brought us here. Anyway, this has been a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed yourself. Uh, thanks for tuning in. You can follow me on social media, at Terry the Loon. There'll be information on the bottom there. Hashtag the Terry Taylor Show. So yeah, I'll be back next week, uh, next Friday, with another episode. So make sure you tune in. I'll have a new one every Friday. Thanks for stopping by. Make sure... You click like, the little thumbs up button, that really helps the channel a lot. Also, share us out. You know somebody wants to cook some vegetarian food? Here you go. And yeah, make sure you subscribe to the channel too. That really helps as well. Anyway, I'll see you next Friday, and thanks for tuning in.